Hello AP 2D and 3D students. You're getting this email because you have signed up for the 2D portfolio course or the 3D portfolio course for next year. I've also attached your parents to this email. So hello parents and welcome. Uh, this video and all of the documents that you're receiving as attachments to this email will help aid you in being successful with the AP portfolio. I'm going to go over what the portfolio entails. I'm going to go over grading rubrics from the AP College Board, and I'm gonna go over a whole lot of other information, which is all pertinent to being successful in the course for the next year or two years. So let's just talk real quick about the courses. Um, you're either a junior or you're a senior taking this course. For those of you who are going to be juniors next year, you will take the course for two consecutive years and build your portfolio over those two years. For those of you who are going to be seniors next year, you will only have one year to build your portfolio. So please keep that in mind as I talk. Um, if you're a senior, you're going to kind of be on the accelerated path. And if you're a junior, you have a little bit more time to get your things together. Um, either way, I just wanna talk briefly about the benefits of submitting a portfolio to the College Board because you're going to have to make a decision come uh, around October as to whether or not you're actually going to pay the College Board to take the portfolio exam. Um, there's actually no physical written exam for the art portion of the AP. Um, it's gathering a portfolio together in a digital fashion and sending it in. So that costs $80. Um, and as of last year, they made you sign up for it and commit to uh, the portfolio in October. Now that may change with all of the COVID-19 things going on, but as it stands right now, that's how it's working. And if that changes, I will update everybody. So what that means if you're a senior, if you're a junior, you don't need to worry about this until next year, but if you're going to be a senior, um, some benefits of taking and signing up for the AP portfolio is that it will give you a full um, class credit. So what that means is you'll actually get three credits at the college level for passing the portfolio. And most colleges, and we'll go over this a bit later, will require you to score a three, four, or five in order for it to count as a college course. So just to give you some perspective on that, um, a three credit class at Shippensburg, so one course that is three credits costs $957. So if you were to take the portfolio and pass it, which would cost you $80, that would work as your, one of your humanities classes. So say you're not going to go into art as a career uh, in college. Say you want to major in, maybe you want to be a nurse, or maybe you want to major in environmental science. That's okay. You will still get credit towards a humanities course. So typically when you go to college, you will be required to take so many humanities courses, so many math courses, so many history courses. So this will go towards that. So it will save you a significant amount of money. So you know, you're, you're paying $80. And as long as you're passing the portfolio, you're getting a $957 class in return at the Shippensburg rate. Now, of course, if you're going to a college that's more expensive or a private school, it's going to be a lot more than that. So just wanted to to throw that out there that even if you're not planning on going into art as a career, it's still a great way to save money for college. So just with that said, if you decide that you do not actually wanna sign up for the portfolio, that is okay. You may still take this course um, regardless of whether or not you're going to submit a portfolio to the AP College Board. All right, next what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through uh, what is called the AP Art and Design Course and Exam Guide. It is sent to you as an attachment. It is a very large PDF. It's about 48 pages. I'm not going to go through it page by page, but I've highlighted important areas that we're just going to briefly touch on together. 
Anything that's highlighted in purple is for both the AP 2D and the 3D course. So it applies to everybody. Anything that is highlighted in pink is just for 3D and anything that is highlighted in blue is just for 2D. So we're gonna go now and look at that. All right, this attachment can be found at the bottom of your email. It should be called AP Art and Design Course and Exam Guide with Highlights. And it is quite a bulky document. It is not imperative that you read over this entire thing. That is why I highlighted it for you so that you can just focus on the parts that are really important. So I'm just gonna go through here. First part, remember, anything in purple is for both AP, 2D, and 3D. Anything in pink is just for 3D, and anything in blue is only for 2D, okay? So, first thing we come to is how the portfolios are scored, okay? And they are scored on a scale from one to five. Five being the best you can score, one being the worst you can score, and you can see they're highlighted in purple. While colleges and universities are responsible for setting their own credit and placement policies, most private colleges and universities award credit and or advanced placement for AP scores of three or higher. So your goal here is to score at least a three on this portfolio. All right, let's continue here. All right, so just a little bit about the program. So students are gonna create a portfolio of work to demonstrate inquiry, so that's questions, of, through art and design, and development of materials, processes, and ideas over the course of the year. Portfolios include works of art and design, process documentation, so that would look like a sketchbook, and written information about the work presented. There's actually quite a bit of writing about your art required for some uh, portfolio submission. In May, which is when the portfolios are due, it's usually around the end of May, students submit portfolios for evaluation based on specific criteria. We're gonna go over that criteria in a moment. Okay, we're gonna keep on going here. As an introductory college course, students will need to work inside and outside the classroom and beyond scheduled periods. Homework, such as maintaining a sketchbook or journal, should support the depth of learning expected of AP students. Constructive formative critiques essential in college classes are equally important in AP art and design. So that is just one of many reasons that you're going to be getting summer homework, which we're gonna talk about later. Um, and there will be quite a bit of outside work required of you, regardless of whether or not you're submitting a portfolio to the AP College Board. Okay, so just want to be upfront about that right off the bat. Right. Students need time and resources to engage with art and design in the classroom, school, and the local community. Obviously, we're not going to be doing much of going to museums other than our annual field trip, as long as that's even an opportunity for next year. All right, let's continue here. Again, if it's not highlighted, I wouldn't worry about it. Right here, these are just the course skills, things that you'll be learning about this year. And the three big ideas are investigating materials, processes, and ideas, making art, and then presenting that art in the form of a portfolio. And there's a whole bunch of learning, um, like rubric looking things in here. I would say this area is more for me and less for you. You obviously can look at it if you want, but there are many, many pages of these rubrics with standards attached. So I'm just gonna really go through that quickly. All right. This is the meat of the portfolio and how it's going to be set up. Right? All three AP art and design portfolio exams contain two sections. The selected work section requires students to demonstrate skillful synthesis of materials. The sustained investigation section requires students to conduct an investigation based on questions through practice, experimentation, and revision. So there are two sections to the portfolio. Okay, Section number one is going to be um, physical, I call it the quality section. They call it selected works. It's worth 40% of the total score. 
um, if you're looking at the AP 2D section, you actually mail, physically mail in the snail mail, um, five quality pieces and they actually look at them live in person. Okay, that's, that's not digital. In the 3D section, it's 10 digital images showing quality work. You're obviously not going to send three-dimensional work through the mail. That would just be very big and expensive to do. Um, so that's the difference between AP 2D and AP 3D. Um, and then the sustained investigation is same for both 2D and 3D. This, and we're going to talk at length about the sustained investigation um, in a few minutes. But the sustained investigation is basically you're coming up with an overlying theme for your work and you're going to produce 15 pieces that revolve around that theme. And that's going to be a big part of your summer work. Okay. Um, since portfolio scores are based on AP art and design scoring rubrics, which I have also attached for you, it is essential that the teacher and their students understand the scoring rubrics and are able to accurately apply them. So I just included that in there because all of your work will be assessed using those rubrics. That's how you're going to be graded in class. I'm not going to use different rubrics from the AP College Board. That would just be silly. So we'll make sure that we take a look at those rubrics in a second as well. Okay. And here is kind of how things are scored. In the selected work section, um, and I've attached this also in a separate document. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep on going here. I'm not going to read through this, but again, here's the scoring rubric. I've attached a separate rubric so it's a little easier to read, not all squished. Okay, so again, the blue is just for the AP 2D design, and I've made sure that I've included this as well in the notes that you have as to what materials can you use, and it's basically anything that is on a two-dimensional surface. So you can go ahead and look through that list, but we're talking about drawing, printing, printmaking, fiber arts, graphic design, photography, uh, still shots from videos can also be used. Um, we're also going to talk about um, the elements and principles of design for both AP and 3D because that is pretty much how they're going to be evaluating uh, the quality areas of your portfolio. Okay. All right, down here, all the different materials you can use for your 3D portfolio. Again, any sort of material that can be used to create a sculpture metal, ceramics, glass, um, performance in the form of a still shot, uh, 3D fiber arts. So you can go ahead and read through that as well. And then there's another area with the elements and principles, which we'll go into greater explanation later. Okay. If you look at that section right there in purple that says overlap among portfolio types. So I have many of you that are taking both the AP 2D and the AP 3D. And as you can see there, you can, there, there is um, room for overlap. So read through that section. All right, this section is really important. And we're going to go, I'm going to take you through again later on what plagiarism in art looks like. So... I'm just going to read this to you real quick. Although the use of appropriated images is common in the art and design world today, AP art and design students who use images made by others as a basis for AP art and design portfolio exam work must show substantial and significant development beyond duplication. Okay. Um, any works that make use of appropriate I'm sorry, I lost my space. <laughs> Any work that makes use of photographs, published images, and or work of someone else must show substantial and significant development beyond duplication. This is demonstrated through manipulation of the materials, processes, and or ideas of the sources. 
The student's individual vision should be clearly evident. It is unethical, constitutes plagiarism, and often violates copyright law simply to copy someone else's work or image imagery even in another medium and represent it as your own so that's really important because it's so easy to pull images off of the internet and use them um, we're going to I'm, again i'm going to go through what is appropriate and what is not appropriate when pulling images off the internet for resources okay all right here's just a little bit about submitting your physical works for those of you in the 2d course and then over here is a little bit of information on the digital submission. Um, that is something you not, do not need to worry about this summer at all. We will talk about that when we get back to class. Um, photographing artwork, that is just explaining that they want high quality images. Again, that is something I'll take you through once we get back into the classroom. Okay, so that is a real quick... Um, explanation of this 48 page document. Um, again, I would definitely go through, read the highlighted sections again, and make sure that you have a clear understanding. And if there's something that you don't understand, make some notes and ask me questions. All right, I'm back. Just went over that 48 page document from the College Board. And now I'm going to take you through the summer work and then a more detailed explanation of the selected slash quality works, those five works that you have to uh, physically send in if you're in the 2D portion, and then the sustained investigation and exactly what that looks like. Um, so I'm gonna split off now and I'm gonna take the 2D course and then in a separate video, I'm gonna take and explain the 3D course. So if you're signed up for both courses, that is why you have two separate uh, videos to watch. All right, this is the document that you're going to be sent. It's this uh, Google slide. Um, right here, if you click on this link, it's going to take you to the summer work, which is what you're going to need to do over the summer. And I just want to reiterate again that this is not optional work. This will be the first grade that you get when you come back from uh, summer break. Okay, so here's this document. Uh, it just begins with, because of the nature of this course and the materials needed, there will be no direct project making due over the summer. So this is all just research and planning. So then we get into the classroom, we can just jump right in and we don't have to spend a whole lot of time generating ideas. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do at home is some research. And you will see on the slideshow on slide six and seven that there is a list of artists and this ranges anywhere from jewelry artists to contemporary sculptors to the masters uh, to ceramic artists to textile artists so there's a whole variety there for you to look at um so you're going to go ahead and, and look through some of those and i, I said if there's some artists that you aren't on the list but that you know about and you want to use them in your research that's totally fine with me um, here is my example for you, but what you're going to do is you're going to um, look at that list that I provided of the elements and the principles, and you will see that list on the slideshow as well. Here are the elements and here are the principles. Okay, this is going to be part of the grading rubric used by the college board, that you are looking at these elements and principles and incorporating them in your work and you're actually able to describe how you use them in your works. And there is a video attached to the slideshow as well that I'd like you to watch where they talk about how that grading rubric works and how you're to use those uh, elements and principles in your work. Okay, but what you're going to do is you're going to find some examples. So here is, an example that I found, its title is nonverbal, and it's by a contemporary sculptor named Dan Lum. And this piece is an example of color. So you're gonna actually describe to me, either in your sketchbook, writing it down, handwriting with notes, if you have a colored printer at home, if not, digital is completely fine. Um, 
The artist uses color to show movement as the color changes, as it appears to drip down, leading your eye downward. Another element that is present is time. You get a sense of time passing as the object appears to melt. So within that one visual, I used two elements and one principle. So you don't need a separate picture for each of these. You could, you know, knock out a couple elements and principles with one image as long as you're understanding, um, you know, how that example that you're using is showing the elements and principles okay so you know you might go through here and you might be saying to yourself well i'm not exactly sure what juxtaposition looks like in art okay you may have to go and do a little bit of research you know do a little google search what is juxtaposition the principle of juxtaposition look like in the art world and go from there okay so it's going to require a little bit of research on your part Right? So that's part one here. That's assignment one, is doing that either in your sketchbook or digitally. And there's the grading rubric that I'm going to use when we come back to school for this assignment. So that is worth, that's a 50 point assignment. Okay? The second part is going to be your sustained, invest, sustained investigation, excuse me. Okay? And this is where you're going to actually be coming up with a concentration idea for your work. And this is, think of this as like a theme, and you will be creating 15 pieces for your portfolio related around this theme. So the theme has to be broad enough that you can make 15 pieces around the theme, but it also needs to be narrowed enough because the College Board is looking that you have a specific narrowed theme. Um, and you can see the link on slide two with a lot more ideas to help you get started on that. And I'll, I'll take you there in a moment. All right, here are some tips for your successful concentration. Like I said, it is not enough to focus on a subject, for example, trees or a medium, for example, mugs. Okay? If trees, you need to think about why. Okay? Is it about growth, negative space in nature? canopies, strength and endurance. So that's going to, these uh, highlighted tips are ones that I think are really important for you to look at. And I'll let you read through them. Okay. If you visit the College Board website, and right here is a link to that, you will be able to read uh, concentration statements of past portfolios that were submitted, and you can actually see what they score. I'll go ahead and take you there real quick. This is a really great resource so you know what the College Board is looking for. Okay. Just make a note that this year they changed a lot of their requirements and they haven't updated on the College Board website uh, the requirements for necessarily this year with samples. So the, the scoring rubric used to be scored out of a six, it is now only scored out of a five. So let's just take a look here if you want to look at a score of a three. And you know, click on each of the link and see what things look like. Okay. So this um, portfolio scored a three. You can see kind of their little statement that they wrote. And then here's a rationale from the College Board of why they scored a three. So that might be good for you to look at just so you're aware of what the College Board is looking for. All right, back to this. All right, your sketchbook requirements for the sustained investigation. You're going to create three visual journaling pages showing some processing for your ideas for your concentration. Okay, what that means is I want three solid ideas of what you want to theme your projects around. Okay? And when I talk about visual journaling, let's take a look here at this. This is a really great website to show you. All right, so this website that I sent you the link for shows you what successful journaling looks like. So you have sketches or reference images, you have notes, and it typically spans over a two page of your sketchbook, okay? So requirements for your visual journaling is notes explaining your idea, sketches exploring that idea, 
and potentially reference images if needed if you have access to a printer. If not, we understand sketches are just fine. Okay, so use this website to look through what exactly it is that I'm looking for as far as visual journaling goes. All right, back to this document. So that's the sketchbook requirement. Um, if you don't have access to a sketchbook, please let me know. I'll do my best to get one to you. Okay. When we get back to class, we will be sharing out these uh, ideas that we have for our sustained investigation and narrowing it down to the best one. But I really want to encourage you not to have one good idea and then two kind of crappy ideas. Right? Have three quality ideas uh, so we can kind of narrow it down to the best. It seems like sometimes students want to really only explore one idea and then they just kind of put the other two to off to the side. Okay, come up with three quality ideas for discussion when we get back to class. Okay, and here is a grading rubric for your sustained investigation area. Notice that um, this, the visual journal sketchbook will be worth 30 total points. Right? And there's an area just to keep in mind about copyright and I will be explaining later in the video more about copyright. And then here is just a summer checklist, just making sure that you're understanding what is due um, when you come back to school in the fall. Okay. So let me go back to this document here. This is the slideshow. Okay. All right, so we just looked at that um, summer work form there. Here is a link to additional sustained investigations. This is just going to give you many, many ideas. Right? I wouldn't say that you want to necessarily steal one from this list, but you could very easily adapt one to meet your needs. So if there's something that interests you, you know, make it a little bit more personalized. If you scroll down here to the bottom, you'll find a list of unsuccessful concentrations. So just keep that in mind as you're looking. Like the ones that are unsuccessful are just too general. Right. So that's there to help you too. Right. Next, you're going to see um, an area where you can find more of the elements and principles and then just another brief list of the uh, materials that you can use. Also, there is a video here explaining um, how the principles and elements are used in your portfolio. I definitely watch that video. It is very informative. Next, here is a list with some definitions of the elements of art for you. Here is a list of the 3D artists to study, and that's continued with some links if you're looking for more uh, material specific artists. And then here at the end is just some information uh, if you have questions or you'd like to uh, have a Zoom meeting to talk about uh, anything that might be on your mind regarding this portfolio. All right, I'm back. Good to see everybody again. I hope you have a good handle on the selected works or the quality works and then the sustained investigation. Um, I'm going to take you now through just a little bit more in depth of uh, how you avoid plagiarism and copyright issues if you're using images off the internet. And I'm also going to take you through what a professional artist um, kind of in sustained investigation looks like on the professional level. Um, and then I'm going to come back at the end and do answer some questions that I think that you might have. Um, and then we're gonna wrap things up. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so as far as plagiarism goes, there's going to be times when you need to use internet images. It's just a fact of life. Okay, like let's say you need to include an elephant 
in one of your art pieces, okay? You're obviously not going to be able to go to Africa or India and take your own reference images of an elephant. That's just not practical. So you're gonna have to reference something off the internet, okay? What the College Board is saying to you is you cannot go onto the internet and then find a picture, like let's say we really like this picture of the elephant, and then you just copy this, okay? Um, that is not a good practice in the art world, okay? So maybe you wanna use this image, as, this image as a reference, but maybe you're going to, for example, only use the elephant's face, or maybe you just need the position of the body, or maybe you're going to take this elephant and you're going to uh, just use the texture of the trunk in some way, or you're going to take him out of his, his setting that he is in and put him in a different setting, okay? That is totally fine, All right? Another thing that we want to avoid is Googling something and then finding drawings of it, okay? So for example, here with you know, these are things that other people have drawn. And for example, like maybe we go through here and we really like one of these pieces. I'm gonna click on that one, okay. Um, you know, what it, what the College Board is saying is you can't, what they, another thing that they don't wanna see is they don't want, this is done on a wall, I believe, like a concrete wall. Um, they don't wanna see you stealing this image and then just doing it in a different material. So say you took this image and then you did it in colored pencil or something. Like that is not duplication enough. That is, that's, that urban, that is duplication. That you need to find a way to transform more. Okay, so do not, you do not want to go into an area where you're finding drawings that other people have done. It's a much better practice to um, find photographs, okay? And the best thing to do is when you go and you search, you're going to see something that says labeled for reuse, okay? If you click labeled for reuse, you're gonna find images that the photographer said, yes, sure, I'm putting this on the internet and you can use it. So that is where I would go if you're going to go and use reference images, okay? And I'm gonna pull up um, an image that I really like and I'm going to attach it to your slideshow and that is this one here, okay? I think this is a really great image and a really great way to stay honest with your art, okay? Because we all, as artists, steal from each other. It's just a fact of life, okay? So this is good theft versus bad theft when it comes to art practices, okay? You wanna honor the artists that you're stealing from. You wanna study them. You don't wanna just skim through and rip them off. You wanna steal from many, okay? The more you steal from and then combine into your work, the more you're getting away from one original image, okay? You need to credit that person if you're stealing it like directly. I don't think that's gonna apply to you much. Um, you wanna transform and then you wanna remix, okay? So reference this, this is a really great resource. So I hope that clears up what the College Board means when we talk about plagiarism. Okay, that goes for Pinterest too. It's really easy to go on Pinterest and find things. Um, but Pinterest is great for generating ideas. You just don't want to steal outright other people's work. So I think we've been over this many times in class. So I, I think most of you have a great handle on what it means to steal appropriately. All right. <clears throat> this is a website of a working artist uh, who's quite successful. And whether you're in 3D or 2D, this still applies. She is a ceramic artist. Um, I just wanna take you through her work and then take you through her artist statement. Uh, so, you know, artists who are working, they write something called an artist statement, which is basically like your sustained investigation. So. I would really encourage you, if you have some favorite artists that are the contemporary that are currently working right now, go onto their website and find their artist statement and read it.
Okay, so just to take you through some of her work, and we can click on some of her things. She makes these very beautiful um, flowers. And all of her work kind of has this similar theme where there's little succulents or cacti or flowers, but you can see from link to link the differences in the work. It's not all the same. There is some diversity, but still unity throughout, okay? And you may look at these and think, you know, what could her sustained investigation be? Is it flowers? She likes flowers? That doesn't sound focused enough. So if we come over and look at her about, she is. And you can read her statement. Okay, you can see that um, my love of plants and art comes from my maternal lineage, which began with my great grandmother who earned a PhD in botany in the 1930s. This love of plants and botany was instilled in my grandmother and mother who co-owned a flower shop. So it's very personal to her. Okay, It was in the flower shop that I developed a love for flora, their symbolism and design. It was at the hands of my great grandmother in this very flower shop that my love of art was encouraged. She herself was an artist and fully developed her art career upon retiring from botany. Symbolic details are represented in many aspects of my work. Succulents and cacti are excellent at adapting and surviving in harsh environments, but also they have the ability to easily and quickly succumb to death when given overabundant care. Traditionally, aloe and succulents symbolize healing and luck. Cacti symbolize protection and endurance. So you can see what's happening. She's, she's going beyond surface level. So you might look at her work and think, okay, cactus, um, aloe, succulents, but what is the sustained investigation? And if, upon reading through her artist statement, you can see. You can also see where she used the elements and principles of design. Repetition of form is also used in my work for both symbolic and functional reasons. The repetition of succulent forms represents new life and continued family line. Okay, so everything that she's doing in her work has a purpose. Right? This is especially prevalent in my propagation series, Putting Down Roots. Okay? So I would read through this statement, read through the statement of other artists that you love so that you can get an idea of, you know, what a sustained investigation looks like at the professional artist level. All right, welcome back. So that concludes the majority of what you need to know for the AP 2D and 3D portfolio. Just to kind of give a quick uh, overview of what we talked about, which was a lot. Um, number one, just remember, this work for the summer is not optional. I know we're very used to doing optional work at this point, but this work will be graded upon arrival to school in the fall. Okay? So that's the first thing. Um, I've anticipated some possible questions. You may have more. Um, so you may be asking yourself, uh, what happens if we don't go back in the fall? Great question. Um, I will obviously keep you posted on that. Um, as far as what I've been told at this point, uh, we will still run all courses. They will just obviously look a lot different. Um, I've talked to Dr. Meekin, the principal, about possibilities of sending home supplies. Um, you know, obviously that's going to look different than what we can use in the classroom. You know, I, I can't send you home with with clay that requires a kiln. That just wouldn't be practical. Um, but, you know, we'll get creative with, you know, what kind of things we can get together to make some really quality art pieces, um, you know, within the confines of your home. So that's, you know, that's what we're looking at now if in fact we don't go back in the fall, which would be just heartbreaking. I'm um, sure for all of you students and for parents as well. I'm a parent, I understand. Um, also, 
I have been talking to Dr. Meekin about the possibilities of even getting materials together for your summer work. So I haven't gotten any um, direct answers yet. You know, we're still waiting as teachers to even get back into the buildings and getting the opportunity to clean out our classrooms. So if that opportunity does ar arise where I can get into my classroom and put together some materials for you for the summer work, I will do that. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, some paper that you might need or some other art supplies that you might want to use in order to complete those quality sections um, for those of you in the 2D course. Um, I understand that your sketchbooks may also be in the classroom. And when I go into the classroom to clean it out, I will try to grab as many sketchbooks as I can so that they can be out of the school with a possibility of a pickup area so that you can potentially have your sketchbook. You know, if you have another sketchbook at home that you use for whatever purpose, that is also totally fine. And you know, if, if worse comes to worst, um, you can even use just like free paper out of your, like I have a printer paper or whatever, um, you know, we'll make the best of what we have. So that's just kind of a quick rundown on materials and supplies. I know it's not the best case scenario, but we'll do your best, we'll do our best to keep you supplied with what you need. So if you have additional questions, anything that I have not answered, um, you feel free to send me an email uh, to my school email address. You can send me a private message on Instagram as well. Um, and if you think that it would be helpful to have a Zoom session, like a question and answer Zoom session, just let me know, like just respond back to this email saying that you would like to do that so that I can you know, send out a survey and we can pick a good time for everybody and we can just sit and talk about whatever it is that is concerning you or questions that you have about this process. I know it's a lot um, and I know it's a lot easier to talk about when we're together, but you know we can't be together right now. So just whatever it is and however I can meet your needs, you just let me know and we'll find a way to um, accommodate everybody. So I'm gonna leave it there. And I hope that I hear from you one way or another, either, you know, I, I understand everything, I'm good, I'm good to go, or I need further clarification on certain aspects of the portfolio process. So I hope you all have a wonderful summer and I hope very much that I see everybody again uh, at the beginning of the school year. So have a good one.